some of the research shows that, you know, 90% of the thoughts that we think on a daily basis are the same thoughts as the day before. So if you think that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and 90% of your thoughts are the same known thoughts that you're always thinking, then your life should stay the same. Because the same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences. The same experiences produce the same emotions. Those same emotions tend to influence the way we think. And our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression is equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then it makes sense then if you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, you're going to have to change your personality. And you got to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You got to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors, even how you speak. Then you have to look at the emotions that you live by every single day and decide, do these emotions belong in my future? So many people try to create a new life as the same person. In order to create a new personal reality, you got to change your personality. So the principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Thinking the same way, making the same choices, demonstrating the same actions, creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling called you. And you do that for 10 years in a row. Well, you're going to hardwire your brain into a very finite sing signature because you're firing and wiring that way. And that box in the brain, that becomes our personality, becomes our identity. And by the time we're 35 years old, for the most part, we've done something so many times that the body now knows how to do it as well as the mind, and that's a habit. So we have these unconscious programs of, of behaviors, automatic habits, um, redundant emotional reactions, hardwired beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that function just like a computer program. You press go and it runs automatically. So then when it comes time to change, thinking positively, is going to do nothing because your body has been conditioned for the most part into a program in the past. So the thought never makes it to the body because the body's on a different program. So how do we begin to influence the body so that the thought actually produces some type of change? So think about it. if you think an unhappy thought, you're going to feel unhappy. If you think you're a failure, you're going to feel like a failure. Once you feel like a failure, you're going to think you're a failure. And people get caught in these loops of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking. And that redundancy is a conditioning process because all you need is an image or a picture or a thought and a feeling, a response, a stimulus response. And so the people tend to condition their brain and body into the past. And so when it comes time to change, you got to leave that familiar territory. And any choice that you make, if you said, hey, I'm going to eat a better diet, I'm going to wake up early and work out, I'm going to do meditation, the moment you decide to do something differently, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You're not going to be able to predict the next moment. That means you've left your known biology and you're stepping into the unknown. Now, theoretically, that sounds great, but if the body has been conditioned into a familiar feeling, it's in the known. The moment you take it outside the familiarity, it wants to go back to where it's, where it's comfortable. So the body starts influencing the mind. And this is where people say, oh, why don't you start your diet tomorrow? Oh, why don't you start working out this evening? Uh, you're really never going to change. You know, you're too tired. You have a headache. You know, uh, this doesn't feel right. And this is where people talk themselves out of it. Because if they respond to that thought, that thought leads to the same choice, which leads to the same behavior, creates the same experience, produces the same feeling. And then they say, this feels right. No, that feels familiar. So going from one state of mind and body to another state of mind and body, you got to cross a river. And the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. Now, once people understand that they're going to be uncomfortable, then the question is, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors will you demonstrate in one day? And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing who you're going to be when you open your eyes begins to install neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. Now the brain, which is typically a record of the past, now becomes a map to the future. And if you keep doing it, the hardware begins to become a software program and you start behaving differently. And then if you can teach your body emotionally what the future will feel like, that means then you're not going to wait for your wealth to feel abundant or your success to feel empowered or your new relationship to feel love. 
In fact, the moment you start feeling abundant, you're generating wealth. The moment you start embracing empowerment, you're stepping towards your success. The moment you're in love with yourself and you're in love with life, you start creating equals in your life. Now that's causing an effect in your life. So many people just, many people, they already know how to do this, but they usually wait for the worst thing to happen in their life before they get the wake up call. You know, when we're looking at a person's brain in real time, when they're going through some type of change or transformation, you see this massive amount of disorderliness going on in the brain. Like the person is really losing their mind. All the circuitry is coming unglued. There's all this cognitive dissonance taking place. That's the moment they want to quit. That's the moment they want to give up. That's the moment they don't believe in anything they believe in themselves. That is the prime moment where change takes place right there. Because that's the end. They're on the edge, on the edge there. So it's important for people to understand that if you're going about living every single day in the familiar life that you're living in, and you don't have a vision of the future, then you, you'll continue to live in routine. And if you wake up every morning and you do the same thing as you did the day before, over time your body's gonna be on autopilot. And it's gonna drag you into a predictable future based on what you did in the past. And many people lose their free will to a bunch of programs. Mm. So then <clears throat> when you sit down and you become conscious of your unconscious thoughts, when you're in the program, you're unconscious, right? So the moment you become conscious of that thought, you're no longer the thought. You're observing the thought and you begin to objectify your subjective self. You start pulling out of the unconscious program and consciousness, awareness is the first step to do that. And so many people don't want to light a match in a dark place because all of a sudden when they decide to be defined by a vision of the future, they're stepping out of the known. You're going to hear, I can't, it's too hard, it's not going to work, what about this? And those are the thoughts that are standing in the way between that person and that vision. And it has to come up. And if a person has been in the habit of unconsciously complaining and making excuses and feeling sorry for themselves and judging other people, that's their habit. The moment they become conscious of it, now, now they're out of the bleachers and they're on, they're on the field, right? Because mm -hmm. now you have to not let that thought slip by your awareness unnoticed. And then if you're living in guilt or suffering or pain or unhappiness, but you live that way every day and it just feels like you and all of a sudden you become aware. Oh my God, I've been guilty for the last 10 years. I didn't even know it. It just felt like me. You're starting to separate yourself from your biology. And so you have to go through the process of unlearning before you relearn and that 95 percent of who we are that is what's stopping us from stepping into a new future so then if people then are waking up every single day and i'll think about this the brain is a record of the past if you wake up every morning and you start thinking about your problems and your problems are just memories that are etched in your brain that are connected to certain people and problems and certain objects and things in certain times and places, the moment you start remembering your problems, you're thinking in the past, right? And if every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it and you start feeling bad or unhappy, now your body's in the past. So Thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of your body. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So most people then, they start their day in the familiar past. Then they get up and they run through a routine series of behaviors and their body's now habituated on autopilot into a predictable future. That's the known. So the familiar past, the predictable future are both the known. There's only one place where the unknown exists and that's the present moment. Mm. So then when you're creative, you got to be present. You got to pay attention to be creative and that, that defies or it goes against the programming. And so then there's this, there has to be some type of waging of intention that's greater than those programs. And most people, they get uncomfortable. They'd rather just get on their cell phone or, you know, turn on the TV and watch a football game or distract themselves from that feeling. But when people really make up their mind to change, they have to come up against those feelings, those habits, those hardwired attitudes. And, and it takes a great act of will. But when we do it, the side effect is we see changes not only in our health, but in our lives as well. And then we say, wow, that really worked. And now we're the example of truth. That's what makes it so cool.